here to haul some books. Yay! So I will say it is so infuriating because I keep doing a very good job every month reading for my TBR. I'm like reading things down and then I just buy books and so I keep not going negative. Now I am still doing very well all things considered for the year. I believe that for the year I'm net positive eight books overall on my TBR uh, and I will just go ahead and insert that here now. So, you know, I mean, like, I am not doing bad. I'm doing much better than I was before I started tracking this deliberately and talking about it with you guys. But I just am like, I got 20 books off my TBR. So how am I still up? The answer is pre-orders this month. So I'm actually pretty optimistic that next month I may be back into the negative. Here's hoping. Let's, let's manifest that for me. But this month, not so much. So let's talk about all the books that I bought. So we're going to start with my collection stuff because the last drop of the penguin little the little cloth bound classics I think that's what they're called came out and I will say I love this color story just as much as I loved the one that we got in the spring I love it when they have these bright colors it's interesting it's not just navy which a lot of them have been um so yeah I absolutely love the color story and I have to say, I'm like weirdly glad it's over. And that doesn't feel like a great feeling for a collector, but it just was, it, I couldn't enjoy these as much when they were doing these big drops. I wish even if they had done them in like bundles of four or like really six at a time instead of 12, it might have felt a little bit more exciting. But all that to say, I do still really enjoy these. Um, I had to get these from Waterstow because Book Depository is dead, RIP. They all arrived, no problems. Let's just run through the titles that were included in this release. So we have Chess by Stefan Zwi, which I believe is a German classic. I say that because the original title is Schnock Novel. I don't know. I may not be saying that right, but anyway. Called Chess, and you can see the kind of checkerboard pattern. Then we have The Awakening by Kate Chopin, which is a feminist classic. They have another version of this in the Penguin Vitae. So now they have it in two of their lines. It's nice, bright pink. Pink is for girls, I guess. The Fall by Albert Camus. This is a French existentialist mid-century classic. Uh, I believe I read this in French during my minor because they had us reading a lot of Albert Camus. We have Babylon Revisited by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which I believe is a short story collection from him. This includes Benjamin Button, if I remember rightly. Yeah, it does. So yeah, I've read some of these, but not all of them. So I'm sure I will get to these at some point. I do like the Art Deco pattern. That was a good call. Then we have Calypso in London by Sam Selvon. I believe that he is a writer from the Caribbean in the mid-century. I think that he may be more read in the UK than he is here, but that makes sense since this is published in the UK. Then we have Clarisse Le Spector, The Imitation of the Rose. I believe that she is a French Canadian author. So there you go. Uh, Nabokov's Dozen by Vladimir Nabokov. I believe that this is another short story collection. Uh, I've read Penin and I DNF'd Lolita from Nabokov. So I'm familiar with his writing and yeah, I'm sure I'll get to this eventually. And then we have what I think is probably my favorite design in the entire collection. And that is Summer by Edith Wharton because look at the cute little books on it. And it's this beautiful yellow with this sort of like rosy red, maybe like kind of a pinky red or a reddy pink. Oh, I love the design of this one. And then we have Yukio Mishima, Death in Midsummer. This is a short story collection from a Japanese author. And it has kind of the uh, sort of wave, the traditional depiction of the ocean in Japanese art as the pattern. I love this bright blue with the yellow. Then Francois Sagan, uh, Bonjour Tristesse, Love Sadness. Uh, yeah, another mid-century novella, I believe. I wanted, I can't remember if she's French or 
French Canadian. We have Jorge Luis Borges, uh, The Library of Babel. I really love the pattern and the sort of orangey red of this one. I really, really like the way this one looks. Uh, and Borges is a author I've been meaning to read more of. So intrigued by this. And then last but not least, we have My Friend Maigret by Georges Simon. This is the first book in the Maigret detective series. I have a different one on my TBR already because he is an author slash this is a series I've been meaning to try. So this is the first one. So now I have to decide which of them I'm going to try first, but definitely very interested in this one. So yeah, so those are all of the little cloth bound classics, at least for now. If they release more, like I said, I hope they'll do them in smaller batches because I think it'll make it feel more exciting and special. Uh, and then the publisher sent me a copy of Mammoths at the Gate by Niveau. This is the fourth book in the singing the cycle of the singing hills the singing hills cycle there we go uh and i am so excited to continue this is becoming one of my favorite kind of fantasy novella series i really love the world and the kind of stories they are they're very sort of contemplating the nature of storytelling itself and uh yeah the writing's great can't wait to read this. Thank you very much to Tor.com for sending this my way. Pre-orders. I did get my physical copy of Witch King by Martha Wells. I read this as an arc earlier this year and this is a standalone fantasy having to do with like necromancy if that sounds interesting to you. So yeah. Glad to have my physical copy. Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angeline Bully is her new release. It is another mi mystery thriller and a another one about um, a murder investigation involving an indigenous group. And I just absolutely love Firekeeper's Daughter. So I definitely want to see if that was a one hit wonder or if she can replicate some of that magic in Warrior Girl Unearthed. So very excited for this one. Also, the cover is gorgeous. And then the Mill House Murders, the classic Japanese laughter mystery. This is a follow on to the Decagon House Murders, which uh, is definitely my favorite of the classic Japanese mysteries that I read for a little project I did. And it happened that the next book in this series in translation from English was due out from Pushkin Vertigo. So I went ahead and pre-ordered it. Very excited to get to it because I loved Decagon House Murders. And then I guess we'll continue on the Japanese murder mysteries. So I picked up the next three in the series from Seishi Yokomizo. These um, are all following the same inspector. And yeah, I just I enjoyed the Hanjin murders quite a bit. So I wanted to keep going. Also, I'm loving the covers, the classic covers on this. We have Death on Jokumon Island. We've got the Village of Eight Graves. We've got the Inugami Curse with some ominous legs sticking out from the ice, the snow. I don't know. But anyway, these should all be classic Japanese murder mysteries. I'm expecting some locked roomness, And uh, yeah, I'm excited to keep going in this series. And then somehow I totally missed that we are getting a Nico D'Angelo, at least story, if not series, question mark, from Uncle Rick slash Mark Oshiro. I am so excited because I think Nico is one of the most interesting parts of the Heroes of Olympus. Well, of the whole series in general, but particularly in the Heroes of Olympus series, I feel like he was one of the real standouts. So I'm so excited that he's getting his own standalone story. Uh, I had no idea this was coming out, but I can't wait. Look at the cool in papers. This is going to be a treat and gets me even more excited for the new Percy Jackson book coming out in September. Okay, and then only three fashion books this time. I feel like that's very reasonable. Three books about sewing or fashion. So I got 20, 20th century fashion in detail. This is the in the same series as the 18th century one I got last month. This had a price drop, so I went ahead and grabbed it and it has lots of lovely details about kind of more contemporary fashion references. Looking forward to diving into this a little bit more. Uh, I got another, I have my eye on about corsetry, which is stays in corsets, historical patterns translated for the modern body by, by Mandy Barrington. 
I'm trying to make some adjustments to the pair of stays that I'm working on right now. So I'm hoping that this can also be a helpful reference. And then one that somebody mentioned in the comment section and I immediately went and got it. So whoever shouted this one out, I appreciate it. I got How Patterns Work, The Fundamental Principles of Pattern Making and Sewing and Fashion Design. Oh my gosh, I am so excited about this. This is sort of like a reference manual about how to adjust patterns and because uh, I, it's hard for me to find patterns that are in my size or that fit me or accommodate, you know, the size of my bust, etc. I'm so excited to have like a more technical manual to help me figure out how to move things around. So, so excited to have this. And then the last group, these are all books for two videos. So these are books with a very specific purpose in mind, which I feel like justifies me getting them. So I can't remember totally which books are for which. I think these four are all for one and these are for another. So maybe we'll try that. So I think these are the four that I needed for um, a project I'm doing in July where I am reading all of the nominees for the Edgar Awards from this year. So I can't remember which one actually won. And I know that there's at least two others. There's Like a Sister by Kelly Garrett and The Maid by Nita Prose. Those were two of the nominees. And then I think that these are the four I need to read, but I could be wrong. Maybe The Devil Takes You Home isn't in there, but um, I think that these are the ones. So The Devil Takes You Home by Gambino Iglesias. This is the one I'm wondering if it if I'm right, because I want to say that it's, I've heard it talked about a little bit as horror. So maybe I'm wrong. It's The Devil Takes You Home is a par panoramic odyssey for fans of S.A. Crosby's Southern Noir Blacktop Wasteland by way of the boundary defying storytelling of Stephen Graham Jones and Sylvia Marina Garcia. So there you go. I've read from all three of those authors. So that is an interesting set of comparisons. Um, but here's one. Then Gangland by Chuck Hogan. This just came out in paperback and I think that this is some kind of like police procedural crime thing set in the 70s. So not normally the kind of book I would pick up but it's one of the nominees. Uh, Devil House by John Darnell. I did not enjoy Wolf in White Van. This has been very hyped on TikTok so I don't know we'll see how I do with this. Guessing this is going to end up being more general fiction to me than mystery thriller but we'll see. We'll see how we do. Uh, and then Notes on an Execution by Dania Bukovka, which I've heard great things about. So I'm very excited to read this. And I'm glad that this is pushing me to pick this up because I've heard excellent things. So there's that video. And then a different video, I picked up Feel the Burn, a Bernie Sanders mystery by Andrew Schaefer. I have read his uh, Biden take on James Bond, <laughs> a James Bond story. And I think that this is Bernie Sanders in a cozy mystery. And he's got his little gloves on the cover. I don't know. This I'm hoping is gonna be funny and adorable. The Verifiers by Jane Peck, which is an online detective agency for uh, a, a detective agency for online daters to like scope out potential matches. And then I think there's a murder that happens. So we'll see there. And then Jackal by Aaron E. Adams. I actually don't know anything about this one, but it was really well received last year. So I'm excited to kind of go in a little bit blind and, uh, you know, find out what it's about. A young black girl goes missing in the woods outside her white Rust Belt town, but she's not the first and she may not be the last. So there you go. This was very hype. So I'm expecting I'm going to love this one. And with that, those are all of the books that I bought in May. You're seeing this in June, but I bought these all in May. Like I said, I am hoping because I have fewer pre-orders coming in really for the rest of the year that maybe we're finally going to get back in the negative. Let's manifest that for me. And yeah, but I'm, I'm loving all the books I got. A lot of exciting things coming in. So, you know, I love, I love a book haul. What can I say? I'm a simple girl. I like pretty books and I like fun sounding books. So there you go. Anyway, let me know if you have picked up anything exciting recently. Let me know if you have thoughts about any of the books that I hauled. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social means if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.